Hello, this is Starshot here to welcome you to my Let's Play of Castle in the Darkness. Uh, we last left off exploring more of this uh, castle entrance until we find ourselves here in the red area. Uh, we still have more to explore, of course, and we'll see what else we can find. So let's get started. Wasn't much of a recap, but there, I haven't been able to do as much probably lately. But uh, hopefully I can make some more progress today. See if I can get either a new weapon or uh, fight a few mo more bosses today. Because we did take care of the frog guy. So, but we still have, of course, a few more to go through. Not sure how many, but we'll find out. Uh, it looks like we there's a jail, but I'm missing a key for it. So we'll just have to save that for another day. And I guess the axe is working out so far, since... You know, kind of gives you the r range and uh, a way of attacking enemies without worrying about re repercussions so far just for the ones that kind of get really close to you that you have to watch out for. And then like these enemies here who kind of uh, have a weird pattern to them. But I got down here without too much trouble. But of course we have the frog guy here who's going to try and mess with us here. And sadly we can't, even though we were able to avoid falling, we uh... Uh, it looks like we have no choice, so... But at least there's another save point we can make use of, so... Uh, of course we got this spearman here, but we could probably have just avoided him if we want. So nothing over there... And now we kind of have this, but of course it's just makes things that much harder, but we sort of need them if we want to get past the, uh, or want to get up to where that, um, ledge was. So that's kind of the only problem with, uh, setting the switch off here. Okay, didn't realize the spikes were gonna fall on me, but I guess they are. But thankfully, we're not too far away from using it, so... We're getting to the area there, so... Let's see if I can just... Or, no, I don't want to set it off and uh, happen to hit something without realizing it. Let's try and set the spike off here. Okay, so not too bad. But let's hope we can uh, avoid any more traps. Oh, cool. I just picked up the winged boots. So this should really give us a whole lot more options in uh, getting around now. And we don't have to worry about this area anymore. And we can finally climb out of this pit we fell into. After we save, of course. We don't want to forget that. get past him anyway and, and continue on to this area here. Ah, darn it. Uh, didn't realize that was uh, one of those blocks. So, but this is pretty much the point of the game now with the double jump here. Now you can either continue traveling through here or you can uh, start backtracking and see what else you can find or miss. But I'll continue a little bit more here until we uh, kind of find a spot where we think we should go back. Or, you know, because you know, usually, you know, you mostly want to backtrack until you kind of get to a point when 
you either have new options, and that guy just went through the bottom there, didn't he? Oh well. <laughs> uh, not sure if that was intentional or not, but let's just say it was and move on. Okay, so now we're facing the frog guy here with his new armor. Uh, I think the, um, as nice as the uh, axe is for this section, it might be better to have the sword instead. So let's go ahead and give that one a try. Since, you know, we can do that here. Or let's see. Okay, yeah, it's just Mirror's Edge, which only does two damage here. So we'll just have to work with that. But I think it should work a bit better against him, since it'll allow us to attack a bit quicker and make use of when uh, we have better openings. But yeah, we should probably avoid <coughs> fighting him when he's kind of just ready to attack. Yeah, pretty much when he cries like that is pretty pretty much the best time you want to attack him. And you do have to avoid the when he kind of jumps like that because of the whole, you know, damage shockwave damage apparently he does. Just tells you just how big or how heavy he really is. Okay, when he pretty much when he trips is. Eh. Yeah, for the most part, it doesn't look like we have that many chances to attack him. So, I'll just stick with the uh, Executioner this time and see if that works better. kind of do experimentation here and there, figuring out what the best strategy is for any boss. Just like, you know, Dark Souls, if you're experienced with that, or any other RPG out there. And some weapons can work better than others, for either, depending on your playstyle or how much damage they can do. It'd be nice to have a bit more, uh, a better tell to see how he, uh, or when he jumps, instead of him just kind of jumping and you just have to avoid it. Because you kind of have to, you know, because as I said, you kind of have to jump yourself, but yeah, look right there, like, I had no idea he was going to do that, and so instead of jumping I should have just gone under him, but you can't always plan for that. There, I was hoping he would jump, but he didn't. You know, so I couldn't go under him and avoid those hits he gave to me there. Like, I guess there I should, probably should have avoided him better. Apparently I have no health, but somehow I'm still alive here, which is weird. And he trips and the bubbles kill me. Eh, not much I can do sometimes. It definitely takes a while to kind of get into a rhythm, or finding, kind of just seeing how he, they fight and doing your best to avoid them. Come on, jump. Ah, darn it.
because, yeah, you know, as I said, it's really difficult to kind of judge when and where he hits. Or when he will hit. And then he does have pretty decent uh, uh, range, too, so I kind of have to be careful. I guess I don't really think his jump should really hurt you, at least in my opinion. Sort of feels like he, you know, it just should just be a jump he does, not really something that should hurt you. I don't care how fat he is. That was kind of weird. He actually attacks when he's in air like that. I guess there's another reason why the sword might work out better sometimes because of, uh, you know, being able to hit him straight on instead of trying to angle it with the, you know, arc axe here. much when he, er, uh, okay, him s stopping like that is barely lasts a second, so it's really hard to kind of judge when you need to avoid that, really. Mm. I guess now I've sort of reached a point where I'm wondering if I should try to do some backtracking, see if I can find some better equipment than the axe here, or my armor even. Now that I have my double jump here. And I wouldn't think his bubbles that he shoots out would hurt that much either, but apparently they do. I was hoping to avoid being boxed in there. So I'll probably try this one more time before maybe going back and seeing if I can uh, uh, find some other stuff and see if that might would uh, work out better for me or not. Because there are a few places I uh, can check out again to see if uh, there's any equipment or things I've missed. Like the museum, for example. Or, uh, there was also a, actually a manor that we didn't visit that would probably be important too. But actually, I guess, maybe with how much... With just how much damage I am doing to him, I feel like I can defeat him here. I just need the right moment. Because I am doing pretty decent damage to him with the axe here. It would just be nice if, uh, if uh, I could kind of time his jumps a bit better. You know, like there, I definitely needed to go much earlier to get under him because that amount of space you get between him and his jump was too, too uh, doesn't really give you enough room. stopped jumping, but instead he did, and so I wasn't able to avoid him. Okay, I almost got him here. Ah, oh, there we go. 
Finally. So it took a while, but I finally did uh, defeat him, so I guess I didn't need anything more, just more practice. Let's see. So he apologizes. And is giving me that treasure there. And got the runic blade. And just kind of lets me pass here. So let's go ahead and equip that blade we just picked up. I meant to equip that sooner, but my down button was acting funny. So let's go ahead and check it out. Can absorb certain types of magic, and it does 5 damage, so that's probably what we're looking for. But I would like to maybe just continue going this way until I can find a warp point or something. Right? hit this guy at all. That's what I'm trying to use this magic ball for here. But it seems to not be doing anything. Oh, here we go. Finally found a warp point here. So... I'll probably go ahead and do some backtracking here and see what I, else I can find around. Since uh, I have a warp point for the Windy Ruins, the Castle Entrance, and Alexandria here. I know I found a warp point for the caves, but I guess that didn't get unlocked. So, but now that I have the double jump here, if I remember, I think there was a giant treasure chest uh, somewhere around the stage that I didn't get to before. So let me try going very back to the beginning here. Here we go. So we got the Crystal Shock. So there are other forms of magic you can pick up here. Like, the Crystal Shock is like one of those little orb things that we saw sh being shot out before, so... Let's see. Oh, here's the Clock Tower. I think there was something in here we may have missed. So let me go ahead and take a quick look here. And of course, thanks to the armor and the health we've gotten, we take a lot less damage, too. Okay, but I don't think there's anything around here, at least. So I can check the other areas in this clock tower and see if that's what we're missing here. Since I also got a lot of gold, too, so I can start kind of picking up uh, anything else I may, or may, or may or may not have missed earlier. Like, here's this area here. And a nice little Easter egg. Uh, we got our old friend. Uh, I forget what he's called, but I know he's from the game, game Cave Story. He's kind of like the Kool-Aid man. So, just a little Easter egg for anyone who's curious. And that's kind of where you find it. Oh, cool. A treasure chest we didn't get before. And just had money in it, though, so... Nothing big there. Let's see. Oh yeah, there is uh, some blocks here and the treasure chest that we already got, so... Nothing more there. Yeah, him just telling us that we can use the crate. So I don't think I gave... or I went all the way up here. Darn it. And that's why you really should save a lot earlier, in this case. Oh, I actually went all the way back to this. Oh well, at least maybe this way I can save, or I can equip the sword a bit sooner. There we go. Okay, sorry for the delay there. So let me, let me go ahead and uh, get through here quickly before... Uh, Take this way. So we can pick up the crystal shock that we missed there before. And 
save right here. Oh yeah, there wasn't actually anything down there, if we recall, so... And of course we have the Kool-Aid Man's room there that we can, uh, you know, we can just... Since I already showed that off, we can just move on here. There's nothing over on that room over there that we found. So, but let me go ahead and just kind of find this, uh, or unlock this switch here, which should give us a block. Of course, we get killed for it. But then, we never said this was an easy game now, did we? But yeah, I really am enjoying my playthrough for this game here, just because uh, it's kind of one of those, you know, it's very fast, simple. Ah, darn it, I keep... Uh, just, you know, I really should just be using my sword to kind of reach where I need where I needed to hit there. I don't really need to get that close to activate the switch. But at least I'm not, I don't need to go as far this time. But I do want to at least climb up to this tower here before I uh, finish up. There we go. Okay, so we are missing the key for the clock tower here, so... Oh well. So much for all that effort, huh? Well, that's what happens sometimes. You kind of work towards something to try and do your best with it, but... But I can still kind of check out a few more things around here. Like, I'm pretty sure I can... There we go. Okay, I reached the ledge, but... Apparently there's really nothing there. There we go. And yeah, still missing the museum key for this area too. So I think what I need to do is visit um, this one manor I remember from the forest. But, uh, I think there's one other thing I can check up on while I'm back here. Yeah, it was the inn here, as well as this, uh, these things here kind of, you know, lead to, it looks like an area that we haven't been to before. I tried to double jump there, but it was off. Oh, cool. Got a, like a big, uh, whatever this big guy is with the birds. Taking way too much damage from this guy. It might be better if I use the axe at, at this point here. So let me go ahead and save, just so I don't lose my place here, and let me bring out my axe. So let me take care of this guy, and then that should probably be a good spot to stop for now. Sorry if this video is a bit long, but I felt like wanting to try and get a bit more done in. There we go. Not too bad. And we found ourselves summoned falcon. I'm not quite sure how that works, but hey, we can summon falcons now. So, something you can pick up if you want. I don't think it's necessary, but let's go ahead and check here. 
Yeah, so pretty much it's a magic you can use. So... Yeah, so now we got a falcon friend here who can help us out here and there. So, but you can join us next time as we continue to do a bit of backtracking and see what else we can find along with our summoned falcon here to join us. Until then, have fun gaming. <laughs>